Hello everyone and welcome back to The Beatles Forever. So today we're going to visit once again with Peter Brown and find out more about his recollections of those Beatle years. He had some interesting information and I'm sure that there's more interesting things to find out. So let's see what it is. Home from Hamburg. When the Beatles got back from Hamburg, they were in low spirits. They didn't speak to each other for weeks after they got back home. Paul got a job with a delivery truck and was making seven pounds a week to earn extra money for Christmas. John, no surprise, stayed in bed all day and night. And he slept trying to escape being stuck in Mendips. Cynthia brought him things to eat and drink, and by accident they all realized that each of the Beatles were back in Liverpool and they got together at the Casbah. They set up their instruments and played there, and playing in Hamburg they became professional and the audience noticed it in Liverpool. They were full of confidence and stage presence. They wore leather pants, cowboy boots, and denim jackets, and they wore bangs over their forehead. Soon the word spread and they were offered more jobs. They were recommended for a job as a lunchtime band at the Cavern Club on Matthew Street, and they played there at the Cavern at night. Cynthia at lunchtime would leave art school and go and hear John and the boys play. Sometimes other Beatle family members showed up there, Jim McCartney was no stranger there. Louise Harrison was a frequent visitor, and she cheered with the rest of the fans. She was horrified at how awful the club was. Mrs. Harrison was there one day when Aunt Mimi came in. Mimi was there to see where John was spending his time, and she didn't pay for an admission. She just said she was there to see John. Then she saw a huge group of kids singing and dancing, and Louise said to Mimi, Aren't they great? And Aunt Mimi said, I'm glad someone thinks so. And she also said, You think... We'd all had a lovely, peaceful lives, but for you encouraging them. The Beatles made their way back to Hamburg. John told Cynthia this time it was going to be a short trip and that she could join him there during the Easter vacation from art school. Cynthia went with Dorothy Rome. She was Paul's girlfriend at that time. On the trip, they had cheese buddies and a thermos of tea. They didn't have anything else the whole trip, which was a two-day ride. They didn't have a restaurant on the train, and they were afraid to get off at the food stops and not make it back in time to the train. They arrived in Hamburg and just after sunrise, and they were tired and hungry. John and Paul were there waiting for them, and they had played till the early morning and hadn't gone to bed yet. They were high on prellies and talked nonstop. They said everyone in Hamburg was taking them but Pete Best. Cynthia was to stay at Astrid's parents' house in the suburbs. Paul's girlfriend, Dot, was staying with Rosa, the wash lady, <laughs> I mean the washroom lady, on her houseboat. Astrid and Cynthia got along well and became friends. Astrid loaned Cynthia her clothes, changed her hairstyle, and showed her how to put on makeup. And they would spend hours getting ready to go to the top ten club to watch the Beatles perform. They would sit st- stage side for hours and wait for the boys to take their breaks. On some nights, Cynthia would go to the attic room with John, and they slept in the bottom bunk of a bunk bed and would make love while George Harrison would be snoring away in the top bunk. Cynthia thought that Astrid and Stu's relationship was strange. They were inseparable, and they started to look alike. They had the same haircut and wore the same black leather outfits and ordered the same food in restaurants. The closer Stu got to Astrid, the more the Beatles seemed to dislike him for some reason. The other Beatles had tolerated Stu because he was John's friend. Now they started to disapprove of him. Paul picked on the way Stu played, the way he said things, and John even started to take his temper out on Stu. One night on stage, Paul went too far and said something about Astrid, and Stu took off his guitar and jumped on Paul. Paul was bigger, though, and stronger and got Stu on the ground and beat him. Stu at this time was having bad headaches, and he would get really jealous over Astrid, even though she was always faithful to him. Stu said he was leaving the Beatles, when the Hamburg trip was over and he was going to marry Astrid and stay in Hamburg and he would get a grant from the Hamburg City Council and study art at the State Art College. One night in autumn 1961, John told Cynthia that the struggling days of the Beatles were over. He told her the son of a Jewish merchant came into the Cavern Club and said he wanted to manage them. He was loaded. He was going to get them a recording contract. He said the Beatles were going to be bigger than Elvis. Cynthia said that's all John talked about, Brian Epstein this, Brian Epstein that. And then Peter meets Brian. Peter said that Brian was a puzzlement to his family and a bizarre and hideous joke to himself. He was gay and Brian felt like a freak. Peter Brown said that he was a manager at the Lewis department store across the street for NEMS. Brian would visit him every day. 
because he liked his merchandising techniques. He offered Peter a higher salary plus a good commission if he took the job. Peter's parents were middle-class Roman Catholics who lived in Cheshire, and they felt working for Brian was a bad move. He had completed his service in the Royal Air Force and a management training at Lewis. He felt that he was, or they felt that he was giving up a solid job in order to work for a small Jewish shopkeepers. Peter met Brian's parents. Harry was distant, and Peter lied about his age because he was 22, just in case that Harry didn't think he was old enough to manage the store. Queenie and Peter liked each other right away. He said she was well-read and well-spoken. The first week Peter was at the store, he saw a young shoplifter put a record under his jacket and chased him out the door and down the street and got him back to the shop. When Queenie found out, she nearly applauded, and he became a trusted personal friend of the family and an employee. Peter said that Brian was a great pleasure, but he was frequently depressed and unhappy and drank too much. He started to have minor car accidents that upset Queenie. He had a hot temper and was unpredictable. He could be cold and icy when something offended him. Then Brian just kept talking about the Beatles. Brian at the record store would talk about the Beatles all the time. He said they were wonderful, just wonderful. The music was the best he ever heard of any beat group, loud and crazy and driving, and they were fun to watch. Brian would keep going to the club to see them. Peter said Brian and the Beatles didn't have anything in common. And the Beatles only paid attention to Brian because he was the owner of a record shop. He was six years older than the eldest Beatle, and they were up from opposite ends of the social and economic scale from each other. <clears throat> so Peter asked the question, what could Brian have won him with him? He said Brian knew the answer. He wanted John. He became obsessed with him. In the band, Paul was the most skeptical of Brian and questioned him and did more as the years went by. The band noticed how flustered Brian got when he talked to John, and that worried and made Paul mad because he considered himself the handsome one. They ended up signing a contract six weeks later. The contract, come to find out, wasn't valid because Paul and George were under 21 and needed a guardian signature to make it legal, and also Brian had forgotten to sign his name in all the excitement. When Brian got together with the band, he began to dress more casually. He would wear black turtleneck sweaters and black leather jacket. It made him look inappropriate because Peter said his elegance and polish showed right through the teenage surprise. He started to comb his hair forward to look like the Beatles until he realized the Beatles were laughing behind his back. Then Brian started to pick them up in his car and drive them to the jobs. He just wanted to tag along. He was fascinated by their world. Brian found out how they got their endless energy. It was with amphetamines, and they bought them from the black market. Brian started to take them too. At this time, Brian began to tell them how to dress on stage in memos. He told them not to eat or drink on stage. He couldn't stop them from smoking on stage, though. He told them no more horseplay on stage, and they would also know exactly what songs they were going to play and in what order before they got on stage. John wasn't happy because they had to give up their leather and cowboy boots and wear identical suits. John hated that and tried to get the group not to do it. He said they were selling out. But Paul agreed with Brian. He cared about what people thought. Paul understood appearances and public relations. Paul's, with Paul's encouragement, the band had to agree. Brian had thoughts of seducing John. The question was where. Brian lived with his parents, so Brian ended up renting a secret flat on Faulkner Street, and it was modestly decorated. And whenever John stopped by, he had another band member with him. He thought that being in Liverpool might make John feel weird about having a relationship there, and he decided to invite John to go with him to Copenhagen for a weekend. The people at the cavern found out, and people started to tease John about it. Neil Aspinall found out that Brian was gay and told John. When John was high on pills, he said that Neil told him that Brian was queer. So Brian got mad and confronted Neil. He said to Brian, you, you are queer, and Brian shouted he wasn't. So Brian and Neil never settled the matter. Paul said years later, we were more confused by it than turned off. We really didn't know what it meant to be gay at that time. And when Brian found out about Cynthia, he was determined that he wouldn't like her. When he met her, he found her to be very sweet and unthreatening, and he could see why John liked her so much. When the Beatles went to Hamburg, Brian didn't find Hamburg very enchanting, as the Beatles did. He didn't understand the Beatles' fascination with prostitutes 
when they kept getting venereal diseases. And he is the one who got the Beatles to go to a urologist so they could get the proper treatment when they got home. Now Pete Best is out of the band. George Martin didn't like Pete Best's heavy, uninvented drumming. It was good for a club, but not a recording studio. At first it was said that Pete could be kept for live performances, but in the studio they would use a session drummer. But this time, the Beatles didn't want Pete in the band anymore. Brian was asked to fire him, and Brian told him, the boys want you out of the group. They don't think you're a good enough drummer. So Peter was astonished. It's taken them two years to find out I'm not a good enough drummer. He left the office and got in a van with Neil, and Neil sided with Pete and went to the nearest pub to get drunk. But Neil must have thought better about leaving the Beatles, and he showed up as usual to do his job. In 24 months, the Beatles would gross 40 million pounds, and Pete became a baker, earning eight pounds a week. And he married a girl named Kathy, who worked at the biscuit counter in Woolworths. So I'm going to end the video here. We got to see how Brian and the Beatles interacted from Peter's point of view. We learned a few new things about their time in Hamburg. And now we know that Brian and his interest in John was the reason why he attached himself to the Beatles and became their manager. Pete Best lost his drumming job and missed out on fame and money. Next, we'll see what happened in the Beatlemania days with Peter giving the details. It should be very interesting. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. I wish everyone a good day, and tune in again soon for another episode of The Beatles Forever. Thank you. Bye.